Hello students. Today we are going to see about some higher part of the solid state chemistry that you have in SYBAC semester 4. In that uh, we are going to see about the recapitulation of laws of symmetry. Then after that we are going to see about recapitulation of laws of symmetry. We are going to see about the structure of the crystals based on the planes that are present in that interplanar distances between the planes. We are going to find out the interplanar distances by calculations and we are going to find out how ex exactly the crystal is analyzed on x-ray diffractometer so let us start first with the what exactly the crystallography it is branch of solid state chemistry that deals with the study of crystals because solid state contains two types of particles or uh, materials we can say that amorphous materials and crystalline materials amorphous materials means where you have arrangement of particles in a random manner and in crystalline materials you have ordered regular arrangement of particles particles in the sense we can have atoms ions or molecules right and based on the laws of symmetry we can identify or we can classify the crystals we can classify the lattice points or lattice so we'll start with the first most law of symmetry that is law of constancy of interfacial angles in this what we are going to see that the faces that are formed by the atoms in a crystal that means if you uh, i'll just show you about model that is with me if you consider this is your crystal it's a simple kind of crystal that you have regular arrangement of atoms you have atoms present at say corners you can find here that these are the atoms that are present at the corners and these atoms are going to form a plane these atoms are going to give a face to our crystal and that's why we call it as planes or faces of the crystal right and basically we can think this as the unit cell that you already have studied in your previous standards this is the unit cell or you can call this as entire crystal also because this unit cell grows to give you the crystal right and if you consider first one law of constancy of interfacial angles means the law states that the interfacial angles that means the angles between two consecutive faces are constant for example if you take take this model itself if, if this model has formed face by these four atoms yes these four atoms now this if you consider as a unit cell it has some origin or in the sense some everything must have some origin your atom starts with some origin your crystal your uh, we can say the uh, unit cell starts with some origin so that is say this is a origin of your unit cell if you see this as the origin of unit cell and if you consider if i take this point this point and if you consider this particular part this is the one of the edge of your unit cell and it is going along one of the coordinate axis say this coordinate axis is x axis right your another coordinate axis is going perpendicular to the x axis perpendicular to the x axis and this is going to form one more face now you have some particles present same thing you will find at this particular way where this edge ends you will find it over here yes this is the edge that ends and this these two edges and these two edges are going to form one face of your crystal or we can say your unit cell right now as we call this as unit cell this has a repetition yes by repetition of unit cells it's a building block so if you repeat this block you can build a new crystal you can big a large crystal so if you consider this as unit cell and if you are again extending your unit cell you are putting one more unit cell so one plus one unit and so on n number of units will lead to a crystal right so next unit cell for next unit cell you will find that this will become the face same way you can have one more unit cell it will become the face now just identify we have seen about some coordinate axis what we have seen we have seen that you have x axis you have y axis it has got one plane here also you will have height of your crystal or unit cell that is going to show you the z axis right and this is going to form one face 
Now, if you consider this phase that is starting from the origin of this unit cell, this phase that is starting from the origin of this unit cell. Now, what do you have? You have two different phases, this phase and this phase. Can you see the angle? Here, these two phases have formed some angle in between them. If you consider the same repetition, you will find that your next unit cell will also show the same angle. Interfacial angles between the two different phases of unit cell, consecutive unit cells are constant. For example, for this particular unit cell, say if we have this as 90 degree, this angle is 90 degree. So if you put one more unit cell, it will be 90 degree and so on. If you put one more unit cell over here, the angles should be counted for this phase and this phase and that also is 90 degree. If it is tilting, just imagine your unit cell has fixed base, it has a fixed base and if it has tilted, this particular phase has tilted. So as the atoms are rigid spheres, what will happen? These atoms will push these atoms away here and as this angle has got tilted, the next phase, the next consecutive phase of the unit cell, next unit cell we can say is again tilted. Now, if you count this angle, the angle between these, this phase and this phase and the angle between this phase and this phase, what will you get? You'll get that those angles are same. That means these angles, if you say, and if the one of the phase is showing different angle, the next phase is also going to show the different angle and, and so on. And it grows in the entire crystal. So let us see how exactly we can see that uh, diagrammatically. Say for example, if we are drawing a cubic unit cell, I have to show this in dotted form because uh, that is going to the third dimension. And this is say origin. And if you consider this edge, yes, you must be knowing that there are parameters. You have edge parameter and angle parameters. So those are called as lattice parameters. Those are called as lattice parameters. What are those? You can have edge parameters. Edge parameters can be considered as A, B, and C. And most often we take that edge parameter A goes along the x-axis, B goes along the y-axis and c goes along the z-axis right so here if you want to think of this particular unit cell you'll find that this edge parameter will go like this right now perpendicular to this say if you look at this model this is going the, along the x-axis so this is going to along going along the y-axis say this is your going along y-axis and one more axis that is the height of your unit cell that can be given as z axis let us see that also say this is your z axis and this is going to repeat because the, we are talking about the unit cell only so this is going to repeat right and you can find that this particular x y axis combination is going to form the plane that we are going to show this and we can have one more plane that is perpendicular to that and that plane can be considered say this one so the angle between these two planes means say this is the angle between see this is 90 degree angle so i'm showing 90 degree as it is it can be of uh, different magnitude also so that angle between these two faces is called as your interfacial angle and if you have say another unit cell another type of unit cell let us see what will happen to that say that is not 90 degree let us see a different one Now here you can clearly see that this is a origin and you have the phase along x, y axis. This is the phase along x, y axis and the faces that are shown over here, say these two faces, say these two faces, these faces, right? And if you observe the angle between this face and this face, I'll show you. If you observe the angle between this particular face and this particular face that will be 
say this is the angle the angle between this face and this face is say this angle and if you see the angle between this face and this face right see this unit cell is ending over here this is going along x axis this unit cell is ending over here and this is also along the x axis so this is what called as constancy of interfacial angle or law of constancy of interfacial angles right and uh, those angles can be written as say alpha beta and gamma alpha beta and gamma now alpha angle can be considered as the angle that is formed by considering the phase that is formed except of your edge a now what is this edge a b and c so for that particular thing we can again think of the first unit cell that we have drawn so if you consider this along x axis this edge is ending over here so the distance from the origin and where your unit cell ends is along x axis is a right along x axis now if you want to see about uh, y axis so if that can be considered over here so that is b and the height is that is going along z axis that is c we can write the axis like this y z okay now next law of crystallography that we are going to see is law of symmetry then we can have law of three laws of such symmetry that is first can be the law of plane of symmetry second the axis of symmetry and third can be the center of symmetry first most we are going to think of the plane of symmetry for that again going to we are going to see this model now see what is this plane of symmetry see plane of symmetry axis of symmetry and center of symmetry are called as elements of symmetry elements in the sense they are if you apply those elements to the crystal your crystal will behave as per its properties right so what exactly is the plane of symmetry or law of plane of symmetry that is if you have a plane a simple plane let us say say this is the plane and if you pass this plane through your crystal if you pass this plane through your crystal like this yes can you see what is happening this plane is dividing your crystal into equal parts which can be mirror images of each other so such plane that divides your crystal into equal parts which are mirror images of each other is called as plane of symmetry it's called as plane of symmetry okay let us see what can be the types of plane of symmetry and what will be the orientations of the such, such planes of symmetry consider if you have a crystal and in which you have a plane that is parallel to x axis and that is dividing your crystal in two parts say if you see like this it is dividing your crystal in two parts that is plane of symmetry and this plane if you see is is going to extend through the number of unit cells that are coming number of unit cells that are coming right so this type of plane is called as rectangular plane of symmetry it's called as rectangular plane of symmetry now how many such planes you can have in a particular crystal say if you have a cubic crystal you can draw this plane you can draw this plane it's an imaginary plane you can draw this plane along x axis right you can draw this plane say along z axis because this is going to show as height along z axis so we have done with this we have done with this what is left you can draw this plane along y axis also even if you draw this plane along y axis you'll find that this is going to divide your crystal in two equal parts which are mirror images of each other so that is what called as plane of symmetry which is a element that is included in laws of symmetry now let us see how to draw this and how to identify those planes of symmetry okay now we'll see how to draw the plane of symmetry what is to be done find out if you if you want to take say 
if you want to take the plane that is going parallel to x axis the plane that is going to divide parallel and divide our crystal parallel to x axis so what we have to do we have to find out the centers of the edges along the axis that is perpendicular so we can take the center of this edge take the center of this edge center of this edge and this edge right simply draw this plane done this is your plane of symmetry now i have used one word that it is rectangular plane of symmetry why because this plane is going to pass through the unit cells number of unit cells so we can say that it is going to pass through the next unit cell also right it's going to pass through next unit cell also and therefore it is extending as a rectangle and that's why this plane is called as rectangular plane of symmetry what is the other possibility another possibility is you can have the plane that is parallel to the another axis say y axis or z axis let us see okay we can take any of the centers of the edges this is say origin and i can draw the plane that is from say here yes it is intersecting say x axis it is intersecting x axis right it's going mm -hmm. parallel can you see this plane is going parallel to which axis this plane is going parallel to y axis because the y axis is like this and it's going parallel to z axis also so it's going parallel to z axis is going parallel to even y axis also because y axis is going along this and it is intercepting x axis what is the other possibility another possibility is let us see we can divide our unit cell from this side this this and this simply you have to join the centers of the edges and this this is the plane can you find out this plane is parallel or perpendicular to which axis let us see see if you see this plane is going parallel to x axis this plane is yes it is intercepting y axis it is intercepting y axis at this point and this plane is going parallel to z axis it's going parallel to z axis Now this is one type of your plane of symmetry. Now let us see the another type of plane of symmetry. So what can be that another type of plane of symmetry? That is the plane of symmetry, but it is the diagonal plane of symmetry. Now we have seen dividing our crystal in this fashion, right? Now what we are going to see, if you tilt our crystal, and let us see whether there is any plane that can divide our crystal in two parts which is going to show the mirror images let's see again you can have the plane and see your plane can divide your crystal diagonally is it dividing is dividing your crystal diagonally is giving you two mirror images of each other of our unit cell or crystal we can say that is called as a diagonal plane of symmetry it's called as diagonal plane of symmetry let us see how to draw that it's very simple once we have understood the rectangular plane of symmetry we simply have to join the points that are present over here join the points that are present over here and this will give you the diagonal plane of symmetry let us see that now so if you have the same type of unit cell
Okay, now what is to be done? We simply have to find out the diagonals. I can add one more unit cell so that we can get clear idea about the planes that are dividing our crystal. This is the origin. Now what is to be done? We have to select the points that are going to show us the diagonal. So these are the four points which can divide our crystal in two parts. Paper drawing like this. Say so this is like this. This and this is the plane. And this plane is. Yeah, I'm drawing. I'm just shading it. This is the diagonal plane of symmetry, and it repeats definitely. It will repeat for these atoms also. Understood? So what we have seen today, we have seen that what exactly the crystallography is, how unit cell are present and the law of crystallographies. One of the law is law of interfacial angles. Second law is law of symmetry. In that law of symmetry, again, we are going to see that the plane of symmetry. We have seen two planes of symmetry. First is the rectangular plane of symmetry and second is the diagonal plane of symmetry. We are going to see the next law of symmetry are the axis of symmetry and center of symmetry later on. Bye-bye.